the line is quite long to get in. Hey you, how about some water over here? I'm Amber and in 2017 I sold my house and everything I owned to live out my dream life as a full-time digital nomad. I started in a 26-foot RV and within a year I downsized into a 20-foot van. I've been traveling in an RV for the last three and a half years around the US, Mexico, and Canada, but I think we can all agree that this last year has brought about many challenges. 2020 has been filled with some major ups and downs and definitely challenged me with traveling between states and countries. I'm just grateful that I can still travel around the United States. This week we're headed to Yuma, Arizona that hugs the Mexico border, which we're going to attempt to cross, do some errands in the city and visit the local prison that might be haunted and then head to Phoenix for more errands before we set off for more travels around Arizona. We decided to stay at a Thousand Trails RV Park in Yuma and make use of the membership we purchased last year. It's pretty quiet here and the sunsets are still really amazing even in an RV park. Yuma sits right next to Mexico and is home to thousands of snowbirds each winter season. With sunny skies 91% of the year, Yuma is a premier winter travel destination for those seeking more sun and to take advantage of the medical tourism in Los Algodones, Mexico. Los Algodones has dentists, pharmacies, eye doctors, shopping, and the best incredible Mexican cuisine of tacos and margaritas. We'll be taking advantage of this while we're here. Visitors travel to Yuma specifically to experience the Yuma Territorial Prison Park and Museum, which we'll also be visiting later in the video. But first, let's get some chores done, including laundry, so we can go have some fun. This is what laundry day looks like when you have to do all of your bedding too. So sometimes we have to do that and it's a lot. So I'm probably gonna need about four machines because I have my bedding, all my clothes and Lily's bedding too. Yeah, those are all mine. I got a lot of laundry. Well, today we are going to attempt to get into Mexico. I know I said that we weren't going to Baja for the winter, but we are in the Yuma area and Los Algodones is right over here. If you've never been to Los Algodones, it's this amazing place where you can pick up pharmaceuticals, you can get your teeth cleaned, you can get eyeglasses. There's all kinds of things there. So they call it medical tourism. So we're gonna head over there today. I know at least I will get in. We're not sure if Scott will be able to get back in. So we're gonna talk to Border Patrol on the US side. Going into Mexico shouldn't be a problem for him. It's just getting back in. So if we can't do that, then I'll just go in by myself. I'm gonna grab Doozer's medication and we really wanted to have some tacos over there and maybe a margarita. But again, if we can't get Scott back in, then I'll just head over, get Doozer's medication and then come back into the US. Doozer's how it's all. Meters at the traffic circle, take the first exit onto the I-8 West ramp. In 600 meters, merge onto I-8 West. Okay, so we made it into the border. Thankfully this time, Gates were not locked. We're gonna see if we can get Scott in. Hey. Or at least out, right? <laughs> we know we can get you in, it's just the out part. All right, well, that was a bust. He cannot get in. They said that if he comes in, he's gonna have to fly back. So 
No Canadians even walking across. I kind of thought that might be the case. The line is quite long to get in the U.S. again, but we got our medication for ginger like really quick. So hopefully this doesn't take too long. All right, well, it's move day and we are headed over to hmm, you. Oh, wow, that's really bright. Uh, the Yuma State Territorial Prison. It's uh, one of the sites to see over here in Yuma, so we're gonna head over there before we go to Phoenix. In a quarter mile, your destination will be on the right. Destination is on the right. Sitting on a bluff overlooking the Colorado River stands the ruins of Arizona's famous territorial prison. We're going to read the prison timeline. Once you're done, follow the pathway left-hand side up the stairs. That's going to be the guard tower. Come back down. Through the sally port will lead you right inside the main museum. Restrooms, informational video, in the back are the cells. Just be aware about the bats in the dark cell, okay? Okay. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Yuma began to experience the American westward surge when countless immigrants crossed by ferry from Yuma on their way to the California gold fields in 1849. In 1850, a military post was established at Yuma, and when rich placer gold strikes on the Colorado River, precipitated a gold rush in 1858, Yuma experienced a boom. The territorial prison was authorized by the legislature in 1875 and $25,000 was budgeted for the project. Today you can move easily in and out at your will, but that sense of being confined is tangible in this legendary location. It's easy to imagine that even Russell Crowe's character felt a shiver and hoped to not end up in the Yuma Territorial Prison in the 2007 make of the movie 310 to Yuma. The grisly crime of passion that got Elena Estrada thrown into the prison for seven years is just one of the many extraordinary stories you will find when visiting this captivating, dreadful, and notorious place of incarceration. The prison held a variety of law violators, including the legendary stagecoach robber Pearl Hart. Hey you, how about some water over here? It is some dog darn hot in here. Scary. My name is William H. Lustenau. The prison continued in operation for 33 years when, due to overcrowding, all inmates were moved to a new facility in Florence, Arizona. Voted as USA Today's best haunted destination in the U.S., the Yuma Territorial Prison is a must-see for both ghost hunters and history buffs. This is amazing. I can't believe that we can actually come in here. You can hear my voice echoing. Anybody want a bunk bed over here? Two foot thick adobe walls studded with chunks of granite kept in most of the prisoners. Books are good. Lots of reading. Looks like back then they had quite a few books. That's nice. Imagine being inside the tight cells which had little ventilation and no indoor plumbing inside the walls so high prisoners had no view of the outside and even inside the dark cell if they were not model prisoners so this is the courtyard for the prisoners to come out for recreational use but these walls are really tall there's definitely no climbing well that is quite an interesting place never been to a prison like that although I think it was in oh Alcatraz actually up in San Francisco good grief it is so windy out there all right it is time I know I'm fidgeting with my hair guys this is why I wear hats all the time because my hair is so thin um, I'm headed out to Phoenix now gonna go get my boxes from my friend Jen please proceed to shower five 
so it's just me scott and i are kind of going our separate ways until later this evening we have a lot of stuff to do to kind of conquer and do all of our errands so we can get out of town by no later than wednesday morning so i guess actually we're going to be there for more than 24 hours so we'll be there tonight and then tomorrow and then so two nights and uh, then we'll head out <laughs> this wind whoa that's crazy oh it's gonna be a heck of a drive i tell you i don't know what the uh wind miles per hour is but whew, it is crazy today i think we're ready tumps are tumps <laughs> things are dumped uh propane is full water is full we are good to go one of the great things about being in an RV park is being able to do all of that so that um, we can get ready for times that we're going to be on the road for an extended amount of time or out on BLM. While in Phoenix, I got my rad mini bike serviced and the spokes tightened after hearing a clanking noise coming from the rear wheel. Unfortunately, my time in Phoenix was not what I expected. I suddenly had to change plans and I ended up heading back west towards Kofa National Wildlife Refuge to boondock for about a week. It's a bit of a long story, so I'll reserve this one for the next video. But until then, keep story chasing.